Hi and welcome everyone. In this lecture, I want to go over the introduction to differential equations. Basically, we're not going to be solving any differential equations. We're going to just talk about definitions, terminology, notation, and the types of differential equations there exist. So please uh, listen very carefully. I'm going to circle the important words and then give you a summary of what those notes say. First of all, information in nature is divided in two forms. So we have discrete and continuous. I'm sure you have seen uh, before discrete data and continuous data are a continuous function. So uh, basically, equations in mathematics that model discrete informations are called difference equations. And the ones that model continuous information are called differential equations. And of course, that's what we're going to concentrate on in this course and in the next videos. What's the definition of a differential equation? You don't need to memorize this, uh, but let me go ahead and read that. An equation containing derivatives, very important, of one or more unknown functions, or which are called the dependent variables, with respect to one or more independent variables. And uh, when you have this, that's said, it's said to be a differential equation, or simply we call it DE. So dependent and independent variables, we know when we have a, a function, if I say y equals to 3x squared plus 1, let's say x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. Now, differential equations are divided in two groups. Please remember, we have ordinary differential equations. That's what we're going to concentrate in this uh, video or in the next videos and partial differential equations. So that's totally different. So it's going to be maybe in your the next classes you take. So. Now, again, I put here, uh, this course is going to uh, focus on ordinary differential equation, the discrete system or different equation and partial differential equations are not in the scope of this course. So now when we deal with differential equations, we need to know the type, the order, and the linearity. So one more time, type order and linearity ordinary the types we can we just went over this we have ordinary differential equations and ordinary differential equations equation contains ordinary derivatives so of one or more unknown functions of a single variable partial differential equations if it contains partial derivatives of one or more unknown functions of a two or more variable. So here we're gonna be dealing only with one uh, uh, single variable. So the way you write a diff ordinary differential equation, so that's an example, that's first degree. When you see the second derivative, that's the second degree, or here it's with respect uh, to T. So, Again, this is a third degree differential equations. Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. Just uh, in algebra, we see when we have an equation, for example, Y squared plus two Y equals to zero, you do use algebra to solve that. And if you solve that, you get Y equals to negative one plus i or negative one minus i so this is a quadratic equation the way a differential equation can be written is y second prime or uh, plus two y prime plus two y equals to and if you solve that you get a solution like this and again we are going to go over this solution if you take the first derivative of uh, y and the second derivative of y and you substitute then the left side will be zero and there's some examples here of 
differential equations in the real life uh, and uh, this can be written as a different force equal to mass times acceleration and later on we're gonna see all that that's the spread of a disease like COVID-19 so you have the susceptible the infections and the recovered ones and for each one you can write the differential equation then uh, I did say we have partial differential equations we're not going to go over this in this uh, class or in the future videos but that's a way how you can write a differential a partial differential equations so these are they deal with partial derivative and so is this one and uh, sometimes something can change with respect to t or with respect to s that's the temperature just an example to show how you can model a partial differential equation. And this is also another example and uh, some more uh, complicated examples. But again, these are just for you to look at, but uh, we're not gonna see this in this class or in the future videos. Let's go over the notation. How can you present a differential equation? First, we have the Leibniz notation. And you know, this is the first derivative, second derivative, and the third derivative. We have seen prime notation, y prime, y double prime, y triple prime. And subscript notation, sometimes we're going to see that u sub xx, u sub xy, and u sub yy, and also dot notation. So y dot t, y the double dot t and so on so these are different ways of presenting differential equations so mostly we're going to be, link, be dealing with the first two and that's another way of presenting acceleration is negative 32 uh, feet per second square so you can say that acceleration is the second derivative of the distance you can write it like that or you can just put s double dot equals to negative 32 so now, if you have a differential equation like this, y is the dependent variable. We talked about that we already, and x is the independent variable. General way you write a differential equation, it's f of x, y, y prime, y double prime, and so on equals to zero. And again, be patient. We're going to see this in the next video or even in this video. So what happens, the normal form or the standard form pulls out the end derivative from the general form. So, and that's the end derivative and equals to this function. So now order of a differential equation is the highest derivative in the equation. We can have linear, or nonlinear differential equations. So let's go over the definition. An end order differential equation, f of x, y, y prime s1 equals to this said to be linear if f is linear in y, y prime and the end derivative. So these are all linear terms the way you present it and uh, with the example, these are gonna be much easier to see, or you can take G of X to the other side. So, and uh, write it like that. So linear <clears throat> first and second order differential equation. So that's a function dy dx and that's another function A sub zero of X times equals to G of X or the same thing you can do with the second degree linear of uh, linear equation now nonlinear let's see these are a lot near examples because in this case the coefficient of y prime is uh, y one minus y so this is when you multiply y times y prime that's non-linear not by dy but just by y prime sine of y that's a nonlinear function and here of course you have y squared the power is not one so these are linear examples of linear equations that we're going to focus in this course and in the next videos so 
again, we have y minus x times dx plus 4xy dy equals to zero. That's homogeneous because it's equal to zero. That's another form second degree that's also linear equals to cosine theta. This is not zero, therefore it's non-homogeneous and that's third degree. Here we have square root of y, that's why it's not linear. Here we have sine of y, that's why it's not linear. And here we have y squared, <clears throat> that's, not, that's why it's not linear. Now you can write the differential equation in differential form. That's mxy dx plus nxy dy equals to zero. If you have this equation and you want to, that equation, and you want to write it in differential form, so what you can do is multiply all the terms by dx, then factor out dx and factor out dy. So basically here, this is mxy and 6xy is nxy. This one is already written in differential form. And uh, that's why I put a question mark here because it's already written, but you can change it to standard form or normal form. So by dividing all the terms by dx, that's how you can write it. Or you can just isolate, divide dx by taking y to the other side and dividing both sides by, by 4x. So, and normal form or standard form, that's how you take the highest degree of the uh, derivative of the y and put it equal to the rest. So that's another way of showing it. And that's for the second degree. Now, what is the solution of a differential equation? Any function phi, again, that's the Greek letter phi, defined on an interval and possessing at least n derivatives that are continuous on i, which when substituted in the end order differential equation reduces the equation to an identity is said to be a solution of the equation on the interval, variously called interval of definition, the interval of existence, the interval of validity or the domain of the solution. So it's, uh, these are, the names for the interval of the solution. And again, be patient. Once we solve equations, you're gonna see this uh, with examples. A solution of a differential equation is identically uh, zero on an interval i is said to be the trivial solution. So if zero is the solution, then you call zero the trivial solution of uh, the differential equation. You can have, of course, the solution curve. So the graph of the solution phi and OD is called the solution curve. Since phi is a differential function, it is continuous on its interval i of definition. So the type of solutions we can have for differential equation is explicit and imp implicit. It's like explicit explicit differentiation and implicit differentiation. So if you have a differential equation like that, this is an implicit solution. So when you isolate a y, then you get an explicit solution. For example, for this one, this uh, y is isolated and it's called an explicit solution. And again, be patient, we're gonna solve all those equations. So another way of looking at it, so just uh, remember explicit when y is isolated and y is a function of x and implicit when you do have an equation with x and y and y is not isolated. For example, x squared plus y squared plus 25 is an explicit, an implicit solution for this equation in the interval negative five and five. By implicit differentiation, if we take the derivative of that by doing implicit differentiation, that's what we get. And if you 
again, isolate dy dx, you get that expression. So that's a solution. Now, if you isolate y, y is going to be equal to this expression, plus or minus square root of 25 minus x squared. So one solution is phi sub 1, which is square root of 25 minus x squared. And the second solution is negative square root of 25 minus x squared, and that's the explicit solution in the interval negative 5 and 5. So, and again, this is how you can show it as the first solution. And that's the second solution. And they are both solutions for the above differential equation. The graph, we know that x squared plus y squared the implicit solution is a full circle. If you take y1, positive square root of 25 minus x squared, this is the top half of the circle. And minus square root of 25 minus x squared is the bottom half of the circle. And again, be patient. Once we solve those differential equations in the next videos, you're going to see why this is happening. So now, next thing important, the n parameter family solution. So again, when you solve an integral, and just to refresh your memories, when you solve the integral, you just say plus c. And these are the parameters. So. If you have, this is a two parameter solution because we have C1, C2, and then when we draw curves, you see that we get different curves depending on the parameters. This is an important note in differential equations. A solution is sometimes called an integral of the equation and its graph is called the integral curve. So these are just the graphs of solutions and as you see, because of the C's, we don't have only one curve, we have several curves in each example. Let's talk about the initial value problem or IVP. So an end order initial value problem or IVP on some interval are contain containing X zero is the problem of solving n order differential equations subject to n size conditions specified at x zero. So that is what you take when you solve this, you are given some initial values. Y of x zero is y zero, y prime of x zero is y one, and uh, so on. And these are called the initial conditions. I think with an example, this is going to be more clear. So this is a differential equation subject to, and in the problems you are going to be given an initial condition. So y of x0 is y0. If it's second degree, then you're going to be given those initial conditions. y of x0 is y0 and y of x0 equals to, y prime of x0 equals to y1. Let's look at this example. Now, this is a solution of this differential equation. And again, if you take this and you derive, take the second derivative and then substitute here times 16 times the function itself, this side becomes zero. Now, the initial values here is given. It says x of pi over two is negative two and x prime of pi over two is one. So first, we apply x of pi over two equals to negative two, just substitute pi over two by t. So you get c1 cosine two pi plus c2 sine two pi equals to negative two, cosine two pi equals to one and sine two pi equals to zero. So you can isolate c1 and you get negative one. And you can apply the same thing now that you have c1 equals to negative one, you find the first derivative and apply that. So substitute t by pi over two in the second derivative. And if you do that, you get c2 equals to one over four. Therefore, instead of having c1 and c2, you just have negative two and one over four. That's a solution. Now it's important to know the existent and uniqueness. I'm going to go over this, uh, just talk about them. And in the future videos, we're going to see 
example. So now two fundamental questions arise considering initial value problems. Whenever we have an initial value problem, does the solution of the problem exist? You have to check that if the solution exists, is that the unique solution? So existence, does the differential equation dy dx equals to f of xy possess solutions? Do any of the solution curve pass through that initial given initial value? And you have to check that. And the uniqueness, when can we be certain that there is precisely one solution curve passing through x0 and y0? So that's the uniqueness term. How do you check that? So through a point x0, y0, y prime equals to f of xy has only one, that's the existent, and only one, so that's the uniqueness solution. To guarantee the existence of f of xy must, must be continuous at this point, and to guarantee uniqueness f sub y x y, that means the partial derivative of f with respect to y must be continuous at that point. And again, be patient. We're going to see that just know the terms existent and uniqueness. That's the purpose of this video. So autonomous differential equation, the first order differential equation is autonomous if dy dx, the slope, is solely a function of y. So there is no x here. Now, differential equations are used a lot for mathematical modeling. Basically, when uh, you want to model a phenomenon by using differential equations, so you have assumption and hypothesis. You try to express those in terms of the then you use some formulation, then you solve that, and you have the solution, and you want to see if that solution answers the model. And uh, so, or a predicts, and you can, of course, graph it and check, and then if it does, then make prediction. If it doesn't know, then the circle turns until you get the best solution. So. Yeah, these are different uh, phenomena. So modeling a physical phenomenon using differential equations. I'm sure we have uh, seen this. The population dynamic or growth comes from a differential equation. And uh, that happens when the rate of change of the population is proportional to the number of people. And that's how you can write the differential equation and you can solve it and get the function for that. Radioactive decay uses the same differential equations. The amount, the rate of change is proportional to the amount. Again, that gives you the differential equation. And we're going to learn how to solve those. So, and spread of disease is the same thing. And uh, that goes for uh, COVID-19 too. And I have some videos on that, which I'm gonna uh, upload it and you can watch them. I think that's good enough for this uh, first introduction. Uh, you can uh, watch this couple of times. And what's the most important thing is the, uh, again, notation terminology and types of differential equations. Thank you for much watching and I'll see you in my next video. Have a good one, everyone.